Hello, Booktube. This is Pentathon, week three, which is a Robert E. Howard, um, creator of Conan, and my favorite, Solomon Kane. So I picked a Solomon Kane story, and I picked it out of this. So I'm going to do this without any glare. This is uh, Weird Tales, the magazine that never dies, edited by Marvin Kaye. Um, let's see, it's a Doubleday Books and Music Clubs Incorporated, so it's a book club edition, Garden City, New York, and um, this is uh, 1988, and it has drawings by Richard Kreigler, and the jacket, jacket painting is based on the story Skull and the Stars by Robert E. Howard, which is also painted by Richard Kreigler. So, that is the story I read, Skull and the Stars. So Robert E. Howard, 1906 to 1936, was one of the most popular of all Weird Tales authors. His Conan story, stories helped establish a considerable cult of Howard fans, a cult still growing thanks to the recent Conan film starring Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger. By the time he died at the tragically early age of 30, Howard writ had written uh, 55 stories for Weird Tales, including the Solomon Kane adventure Skull in the Stars, which appeared in the January 1929 issue. So I read this. Um, it's it's a short thing. So Cain comes to a place, uh, and this is where some of these adventures start with him. Um, Torker Town. Uh, actually, one place they have a misprint, Yorker Town. So that's sort of weird. So the villagers are trying to get him to take the Swamp Road. And then there's a moor road, and bad things have been happening on the moor, the lonely, misty moor. And a miser lives down on the swamp road, sort of a crazy guy who lives in a shack, and all he does is collect money. So and his name is Ezra the Miser. And Cain, being Cain, takes the other road. The road less taken. So Solomon Cain is born about 1530, I guess. Um, he's a Puritan. He um, sort of in the mold of Francis Drake and all the Elizabethan sea dogs and adventurers. And he goes on these adventures, but he's a very grim fellow. And uh, his English Puritan upbringing is, uh, defines a lot of his character. He's, quick with a rapier and with pistols. So in the story, Ezra the miser had uh, a relative living with him and that relative was had some mental health issues and then one day that relative disappears in the swamp. So Cain is walking and he ends up taking the Moor Road and runs into a supernatural being. It's very atmospheric with mist and loud noises and a wraith-like creature that he battles. And then uh, it leads to justice for one Ezra the Miser. I won't spoil how. It's very short. So quick read if you can find it. I think it's free online too. So I read the story, very much liked it. I've read it many times, uh, but a long time ago. So then I went up to my shelves upstairs and pulled down this Saga of Solomon Cain. Um, it has 20 classic stories, dark horse books. Um, it has some good support material. It's published by Mike Richardson, no relation. So there's a little biography by Fred Blosser called The Trail of Solomon Cain. Um, plenty of good information. So here we have, to begin at the beginning, Solomon Cain was born in Devonshire in the rugged west coast of England, the home also of other Elizabethan soldiers of fortune, such as Sir Francis Drake and Sir Richard Grenville, with whom Solomon would associate in later years. Solomon may have been born around 14, uh, 1530. 
He was reared in the Puritan orthodoxy, and judging from his later mastery of fencing, he apparently received early training in the use of the sword. Um, they do have a section where they talk about this particular story. During one such sojourn, um, Solomon's first recorded adventures occurred. Traveling to the village of Torkertown, Cain encountered and fought a Morgos, Skull in the Stars, which is what we just, we just read. Um, I did not like the Misty Wraith. You see the cover here. I like that. That, that looks a little more like what I imagined when I was reading the story. And here, that doesn't quite seem to fit. That seems like something you put on the side of a cathedral or something. Um, and here they are battling. But, but it's a good story. It keeps to uh, pretty close to what's going on. Then in the back here they have um, a section uh, Solomon Cain, a publishing history, so you can get background details here. Uh, there's an image of him I really like right there. Right up there. And uh, here. And here's Neil Adams. The uh, early wanderings here, they have traveling to the village of Torquetown. He fought a phantom on a lonely moor and brought a murderer to grisly justice, skull in the stars. Later, still en route to Torquetown, he witnessed the posthumous revenge of an executed wizard upon a man who had betrayed him to the king's law. Um, there's a lot of dealings with the supernatural. Uh, there's even a story in here where he meets Conan. So it, it was a, it's a good good stuff, good story. And here's some ads in the back. So I enjoyed reading it. Um, I've always preferred Howard to Lovecraft. And to tell you the truth, I mean, it'd be a close call between Edgar Rice Burroughs and Howard for me. I think, you know, obviously Edgar Rice Burroughs was more, Burroughs was more productive. And I do love the Mars stories. But I'd say Howard would be a close second. Um, I don't have enough experience reading Lovecraft to have an opinion either way. So I think um, that, that would be where I would place them in comparison with each other. But the Howard ones I go back to. I really enjoy them. So uh, that was week three of Pentathon. And um, thank you, Matt. And thank you, BookTube.